welcome to the Max Homestead Channel. Um, if you're new, we hope that you'll hang around and subscribe and share this with your friends. Um, but just want to give you a few updates before we get started. We have our list. We've got to go get some more ryegrass seed for deer plots, but also for our cattle. And our winter plots, Misty has hatched out our new permaculture chickens. We've got 17 in there, and then we have another five to six that still uh, coming out of their eggs in the incubator. So uh, great things happening here. And we're fixing to go ahead and get started for the day. Uh, run into the feed and seed places, go ahead and get all the things we need. As again, we're getting prepared for HOA. So we've got to tidy up a few things for the next two or three days. And then we're leaving on the night heading towards Virginia. We will do our live on the road that night and then uh, getting ready for the 11th and 12th in Virginia. So, so excited about that. Uh, but join us today as we go along and try to get some things done. All right, you can see the ryegrass and also the big tubs of uh, the protein mix that we give to our cows during the winter. You see the ryegrass there. This is that uh, WMS deer management that I get. Um, it's based out of Alabama. It's got uh, all it is is foraging food. So we put this out with our cattle stuff too. I know people think we're crazy, but we do that. So um, not only will the cows have ryegrass, they'll have chicory, they'll have wheat, they'll have oats, they'll have uh, clover, they'll have radishes, they'll have all kinds of things, some turnips. So it's just a good mix to give them a little bit more, you know, a little bit more bang for their buck when they're eating the ryegrass in winter stuff. So you can see this is the sheep paddock. I've already put ryegrass out here. We're going to go and put the uh, WMS deer magnet here too that has the extra other seed and then what we'll do is actually work towards the other paddocks now you see I've already done two I did those yesterday remember um, or last night basically and we ran out of light so we're doing this one today we're gonna do the deer plot way down there and then we're gonna go back up the lane here behind the pine thicket and go ahead and take care of all the fields close to uh, the other side of the dairy barn. So we'll leave the dairy barn again to winterize. We're not going to let it go uh, for ryegrass, but we are going to plant the one next to it in ryegrass. So I'm uh, uh, hoping to knock this all out today. Aiden's going to come help me and we'll get on it. And like I said, uh, you see some stuff still blooming, which is good for our bees. So I'm going to let some of that stuff keep blooming. I'm not going to cut any of that, but uh, sooner or later, all this brush that's over here, once it's bloomed out, we will probably cut it down and make this another paddock and go ahead and ryegrass it too but it's just too early because i still have blooms in there and some of my honeybees are still feeding off it so i'm not going to do that yet but uh as it goes then this becomes the sheep paddock that will become the next one and the one beyond that how great all these different seed and forage mixes are and like i said it's made for deer but we've used it the last two years for our cows our last two seasons and it's, it's done very well. You can see some little radishes and turnips and the smaller seeds. Some of this tall here is the grain and wheat. Uh, we've got some, some rye in here as well. Uh, there's some chicory, there's some winter peas, all kinds of stuff. So not only is it good for deer, turkey, and wildlife, it's good for every other animal we have on the farm. So we're going to go ahead and get it put out too. So you see, uh, that's just what we do. I mean, it's not a, I mean, people, people probably think we're crazy, but... Uh, the ryegrass is great quality for uh, for um, cows, and the, and the hay is sustainable. We do not do a heavy fertilized hay because we don't believe that fertilizer is the best answer, um, especially for hay. Uh, so we use more of a, a brush hay, which they like, but it just doesn't have a lot of filler, doesn't have a lot of stuff in it that's good for them, a lot of minerals. So we, we keep minerals with them all, all winter long and try to plant some of this stuff too to really help boost them. So, um, you know, tell me what you think. Tell me what you do, and like I said, uh, if you think we're crazy, you can let us know. All right, we are done with all the cattle pads that are on our one of our deer plots now. Uh, it looks great so far from the discing and and light teal. Uh, we've already got all the rye and all the um, deer magnet on the ground, the chicory, oat, wheat mix, uh, and winter peas, and then uh, Aiden has got. The lime and he's gonna go over it just to help balance this soil out and then we will be finished and calling it a day so you see it's a huge paddock that can double as a cattle paddock after after the deer after we finish out our deer season which will end in late january early february we will turn it right back into cattle fields just for a few weeks to eat this winter grass 
before our summer grass starts coming up. So it's always permaculture, it's always thinking ahead and trying to prep for the next season. All right, you see at the other land again, our, our bee apiary is over there. And then our other cows are over there. So we started making this. This used to be an old pine thicket, then it was a cut over. You can see the pines back there on the back side of the lake. But we've got these front little rolling hills is actually what's been disc. And we're just going to get it planted because this is going to be a, of course, a winter patch right here. All this right here. But basically over there is going to be a heifer patch. So as we as we have calves and as we have heifers to keep them away from our bulls, we're going to put them over here. Which make sure, you know, if you're having calves, you take them when they're weaned. They need to get away from the bulls. If you're not keeping your bulls separate, you need to keep your heifers separate. So one or the other, you got to keep separate. So this is going to be two or three or four paddocks all right through here. And it's going to be where I, we keep our, uh, our heifers. We've gotten all this done by hand, huh? Hey? It's like, this is about, I'd say about 15 acres or so. We've done it by hand, it's about worn out. Whew, it's hot. Seeding by hand. We've done all that. All we got left to do is this little spot right here and on up that hill right there. See the pine thicket right beside it. It's gonna look real nice. Me and Ames been switching out with the little cedar. I think we're crazy doing this by hand, but that's about the only option we've got. We've uh, got tractors, but really we don't have a tractor big enough to have a cedar on it. So we're just making do. Hopefully we'll be able to invest in a little bit bigger tractor next year. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure all your animals are taken care of. All right, we are finished for the day. Just gonna head back home, get changed, and get ready to go to HOA. This will be fun. We are not taking old Bessie. Old Bessie was supposed to go with us, which is our RV. But uh, we're not going to be able to use old Bessie just because the generator and going 18 hours without air and not sure if she's going to work. We're just going to do this. So we're actually going to take a vehicle, which is not the best answer ourselves because that just makes it even going, that's going to make it tough on the kids driving that long. It's about, eight, uh, about 15 to 18 hours, somewhere around there, depending on traffic. So we're going to go and get ready. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for hanging out with the Max. And we hope that you have a great day. God bless. And